coaching is not just show and tell. It's helping players to assimilate information and understand why they do what they do. Heel to toe, don't overextend. Hi, I'm Coach John Scott, and welcome to the Offensive Scoring Workout. The two gentlemen you see behind me will be helping to demonstrate the program for you today. In the gray shirt, we have Andre. In the white shirt is Steve. One of the first things I want you to understand is the difference between a shooter and a scorer. A shooter in the game of basketball consistently will average between 12 and 19 points a game, depending on how much he's willing to go out and practice. On the other hand, a scorer in the game of basketball will average 20 plus points a game because of his ability to make various offensive moves. Doesn't matter what level of competition you look at in basketball, whether it be junior high, high school, college, or beyond, you see very few players that have the ability to average 20 points or more a game. And the ones that you do see are considered to be excellent players. Now the average to good player in basketball will have two to four moves that they can consistently use in a game to be effective. This is not somebody traditionally that will be a scorer. What we're going to do is we're going to take you through eight different offensive moves that you can use in a game situation. It will fit into any offensive setting or plays that your coach will run. Every move that we use will always be initiated or begin in what we call a triple threat position. Now, as a player or a coach, you've often heard the expression, the triple threat position. The triple threat position means that from one position, you can shoot the ball, you can pass the ball, or you can drive to the basket. We're going to teach you eight moves from this triple threat position, and everything we do will center around being able to do footwork or choreography correctly. If you go and watch a dance recital or performance, and you see somebody that is out of sync or out of step, you know that their choreography or footwork is not effective. The same is true for you when you play basketball. You're going to learn the choreography or footwork for these eight different moves. You will have to go out and practice and practice and practice to make them become effective. Once you learn how to do them, you'll become a very effective and powerful player on the offensive end of the court. We guarantee that if you'll go work on these moves, learn how to do the choreography or footwork correctly, that we can increase your scoring average by up to 10 points per game, depending on your ability to go out and work hard. Section one, warm-up drills. The first thing we're gonna show you before we take you through the warm-up portion of the offensive scoring workout is a proper triple threat position. In order to be an effective scorer, you have to have mastered the ability to get into the triple threat position once you receive the ball. A proper triple threat position is going to be identical to what your foul shot position is if you're a correct foul shooter. To shoot a foul shot correctly, your lead foot, which is your right foot if you're right-handed, will be just an inch or two ahead of your back foot. So if you're right-handed, your right foot will be a little bit ahead of your, of your back foot, and the ball will be put in a position between your chin and your chest. Andre and Steve will demonstrate that right now, a triple threat position. This is a perfect position for holding the ball. You should be in a straight line with your elbow, knee, and foot right to the basket. A straight line will enable you to always be on target with whatever you do. We call this a lock and load position. The ball is locked into place between your chest and your chin. It's well protected and it's loaded, ready to pass, ready to shoot, and ready to drive. If you carry the ball down here, you're not ready to do all three. If you hold the ball up here, which is the cardinal sin of most basketball players, then you are not ready to shoot, you are not ready to drive. The biggest mistake basketball players make is they catch the ball and they put the ball above their head right away and they've automatically taken away their options. Again, triple threat position is identical to a correct foul shooting position. The ball is always placed between the chin and the chest and it's in a lock 
and load position. Now you're ready to look at attacking a defender and attacking the basket to be an effective score. Now the first section we're going to show you is the warm-up section for the program. We're going to take you through three different drills that you can use and that you should use to warm up properly so that your foundation is laid and you can become a better scorer. The first drill is called a jump stop face the basket drill. You will jump stop and when you jump stop it should always be one sound. Both feet should hit the ground at the same time so it allows you to pivot in either direction. So it's a jump stop pivot drill where you face the basket and when you face the basket you're in a triple threat position you're ready to score, shoot, or attack the defender. All we're going to do is we're going to run across, jump stop, and we're going to face the basket in a triple threat position. Andre will demonstrate it for right-handed players. So he will face the basket, go with me, in a triple threat position for right-handed players. I will demonstrate it for left-handed players in a triple threat position. Jump stop, pivot into triple threat position. If you're a right-handed player, you will always be pivoting on your left foot. Jump stop, pivot into triple threat position. Jump stop, pivot into position. Jump stop, pivot into triple threat position. Jump stop, pivot into position. Now, if you're a left-handed player, you will always be pivoting on your right foot. Jump stop, pivot into triple threat position. Now the second drill that we're going to show you that's a good warm-up drill for the offensive scoring workout is called a triple threat position shooting drill. You use this every day when you go in the gym to warm up. That's the only proper way to warm up and it's the only proper way to shoot is from this position. That's the only proper way to warm up and it's the only proper way to shoot is from this position. You start in close to the basket for this triple threat shooting drill. You go to the lock and load position and you shoot from that position. Lock and load. Lock and load. Every time you get in the proper position so that your mechanics are perfectly lined up. Every time, elbow, knee, toe and basket should be perfectly lined up. Triple threat. John is demonstrating the triple threat shooting form for left-handed players and Andre in the gray t-shirt is demonstrating it for right-handed players. You can take it over to the sidelines. You're still in close. Notice that both John and Andre bring the ball into a lock and load position with every shot to line up their shooting mechanics. By warming up properly, you will both develop and practice excellent shooting and scoring habits for game situations. This drill will help you be a more proficient shooter. The third drill that we're going to take you through in the warm-up section of the workout 
is called the jab and attack position drill. The jab and attack position drill. We've already demonstrated for you in the first two drills proper positioning for the triple threat. You should be very comfortable with that. From the drills we showed you, you should already be in the habit in a game situation of catching the ball, facing up in a triple threat position to the basket. Once you've gotten into the triple threat position, your first option will be to look to the post or the, or the lane for a cutter or an open man for the pass. If you don't have the pass, if you don't have the shot, automatically you will always go to what we call a jab and attack position. To initiate the jab and attack position, you will take your lead foot, which if you are right-handed, will be your right foot, and you will step forward so that the heel is lined up with the toe of your pivot foot. Your lead foot heel goes to the toe of your pivot foot. So you go from triple threat to jab and attack. Then you lower yourself to this position. This is what we call a sprinter's position. The reason that this is a critical position is because it allows you to be explosive. This is why we call it a sprinter's position. This allows you, once you are down low, to explode to the basket by the defender. A jab and attack position is also a sprinter's position. In order to do that, you come back to triple threat. Again, we'll go through it. Your lead foot, which is your right foot if you are right-handed, your left foot if you are left-handed, the heel will line up with the toe of your pivot foot. Heel will line up with the toe of your pivot foot. Now you're in a jab and attack or sprinter's position. It's critical to do two things when you practice this. First, we'll show with Andre. He's in triple threat. He'll go to a jab and attack position. He's down low. He's reading the defender's feet. He's looking to see where the defender is positioned. He's not overextended. If Andre is to overextend in a jab and attack position, and on his jab come out here, if he were try to try to rise up and shoot from this position, he would be off balance. This is improper. So we will start him in a triple threat position again. He'll go to a jab and attack position on the defender. If the defender retreats, he can rise up and shoot. He's on balance. He shoots quickly. He does not have to take time. Go back down. He does not have to take time if he's overextended, overextend for me, to rise up and shoot and back up to get on balance. It makes you a quicker, faster player. The second thing that you need to remember in a jab and attack position, he's in triple threat, down to jab and attack, is if you are right-handed, the ball will always be on the right side of your lead leg. You notice that Andre has the ball over here. If I were playing defense, this would be very difficult for me to reach in and steal the ball from this position. So it detours or discourages the defender from reaching in. It keeps you on balance, and it gives you a movement that we call the hinge movement. The hinge allows him to rise up and shoot. He's in jab and attack, and he's in a straight line to the basket. Do it again for me. He's just hinging his elbow in a straight line to the basket to shoot. Everything is on balance. Everything is universal. Everything is one motion. Jab and attack. He can rise up and shoot. He's on balance. He's got his hinge. He sets the ball down. He's in a sprinter's position. This is why sprinters get in this format when they prepare to run. It makes them more explosive out of the blocks. Now, the third reason we go from triple threat to a jab and attack position is coaches always tell you when you are defending a player to defend in the waist or crotch area because this is the hardest part of your body to fake. By going into a jab and attack position, a sprinter's position, as a defender, I end up losing sight of the ball. 
I can no longer see his waist or crotch area, and it puts me on my heels or off balance so that now I am not effective as a defensive player. So we've accomplished three things. From a triple threat, we go to jab and attack. We have first accomplished explosiveness because he's in a sprinter's position. We have second accomplished a fluid and quick shot because of the hinge effect. He can shoot automatically. He is not overextended. And third, we have accomplished forcing the defender to lose sight of the ball because he can no longer see into your crotch or waist area. It's critical when you go to a jab and attack position, you start in triple threat. It's critical that you jab and attack with a short jab and you get low. Never jab long. Jab long for me. Now you're off balance. You never jab long. You never jab to the side. Many players have heard of the jab and they've practiced it and they jab to the side as Andre just did. And the basket is this way. The defender is this way. The cheerleaders in the crowd is that way, which is great unless you're in an opponent's gym. You want to go right to the basket and right to the defender. So you go into jab and attack. You're on balance. You have the hinge effect for the shot. The defender has lost sight of the ball. And you're ready to attack and you're ready to score. Jab and attack drill for right-handed players. Triple threat position, jab and attack position, triple threat, jab and attack, triple threat, jab and attack, explode. Jab and attack drill for left-handed players. Jab and attack, triple threat, jab and attack, triple threat, jab and attack, triple threat, jab and attack, explode. It's important to do this drill every day so that you don't get in the habit of overextending. You don't get in the habit of jabbing to the side. Either one of those habits, which is common, will make you an ineffective offensive player. Will make you an ineffective offensive player. Will make you an ineffective offensive player. It's important to do this drill every day so that you don't get in the habit of overextending. You don't get in the habit of jabbing to the side. Either one of those habits, which is common, will make you an ineffective offensive player. Section 2, Footwork Fundamentals. Now, the best way to practice these moves in your backyard driveway or in the gym, whether it's individual or team setting, is to put a chair out and let that pretend to be your defender. It never hurts to put a pair of shoes underneath the defender so that you know which move that you would like to use. Eight pro moves for right-handed players. Move number one, triple threat and shoot. The offensive player receives the ball in his perimeter, defender's backed off, shoot the ball. Move number two, jab and go. As you watch this move, notice that the most difficult side for the defender to move to will be his left. Attack his left side. Again, notice the position of the defender's feet. Attack the side he has trouble moving to. Move number three, jab and cross over. In this move, you're going to jab and attack at the defender, cross him over to the side he has the most difficult time moving his feet toward. You'll notice the defender's feet are faced toward the baseline. You want to cross over so he has to turn his body. Move number four, jab and shoot. In this move, you go to a jab and attack position, the defender retreats, and you quickly rise and shoot. Again, jab and attack, the defender retreats, rise and shoot. Move number five, jab, shot fake, and go. 
purpose of this move is to fake the defender backwards and then draw him toward you. A defender cannot move in two directions at one time. By drawing him toward you with the shot fake, you make him commit to one position. Draw him toward you, go by for the easy score. Jab, shot fake, and cross over. This move is similar to the jab, shot fake, and go move, except that the defender covers your strong side, so you're going to cross him over and attack the opposite side. Read his feet, shot fake, cross over. Move number seven, jump shot to the left. This again will be predicated upon the position of the defender's feet. He'll have the hardest time moving to his right, so you attack his right side, cross him over, and pull up for a jump shot. Cross over, jump shoot. Move number eight, jump shot to the right. The defender's feet are turned toward the middle. Attack the side that he has the most difficult time moving toward. Rise up and shoot. Eight pro moves for left-handed players. Move number one, triple threat and shoot. Receive the ball in your perimeter area. The defender is backed off. Rise and shoot the ball. You'll always receive the ball in a triple threat position. If you have room, always take the shot. Move number two, jab and go. You'll go to a jab and go position. The defender will have the hardest time moving to his right side. So you will attack to his right. Again, attack the defender's weak side or the side he has difficulty moving toward. Move number three, jab and cross over. This time you'll notice the defender's feet are faced toward the middle of the lane. He'll have the hardest time moving toward the sideline or baseline. You want to cross him over and make him turn his feet to move. Jab and attack, cross over. Move number four, jab and shoot. You've already burned the defender on several drives you jab and attack position again, he retreats, rise up and shoot out of the hinge movement. Again, jab and attack, rise up and shoot. Move number five, jab, shot fake, and go. The purpose of the shot fake is to draw the defender toward you. If a defender is moving toward you, he cannot move backwards sliding his feet defensively an easy way to get defenders off balance. Jab and attack, shot fake, and go. Move number six, jab, shot fake, cross over the defender. The purpose for crossing over this time is that the defender, after you have gotten him to commit, will be covering your left side, so cross over to the right for the easy score. Move number seven, jump shot to the left. Again, read the defender's feet. You will attack to the side that he has difficulty sliding his feet toward to stay with you. Go down to a jab and attack position. Attack the defender's weak side. Move number eight, jump shot to the right. The footwork is the same as a crossover move. You read the defender's feet, he's faced to the middle, cross him over, rise up for the jump shot. Again, watch the defender's foot position. Jab and attack, cross him over to his weak side, jump shot. Application for game situations, putting it all together. To use the triple threat correctly, you must receive the ball within your perimeter. Always face the basket. 
Your perimeter is the farthest distance from the basket that you can effectively and consistently shoot the ball. You see three perimeters before you. The first is an appropriate perimeter for all centers and power forwards, as well as all players at the junior high level and under. The outer perimeters that you see are proper perimeters for guards and small forwards at the high school levels of competition and above. Practicing the triple threat moves for game situations. Playing one-on-one -on -one is an excellent way to practice the triple threat for game situations. To play one-on-one -on -one correctly, use the following rules. One, the offensive player must check the ball in from the perimeter area. Two, the offensive player is allowed only one dribble to attack the basket. If more than one dribble is taken, treat it as a turnover. The purpose of this rule is to allow you to get to the basket quicker. It also helps to neutralize help side defense. If you take two or more dribbles, help side defense will be there to take an offensive charge. Learn to attack the basket quickly. Rule number three, check the ball in after a defensive rebound. Four, ball changes possession after each score. We'll now demonstrate playing a game of one-on-one -on -one for you. John is in the white t-shirt and will demonstrate for left-handed players. Andre is in the gray and will demonstrate moves for right-handed players. Try and read the moves that they make as they play one-on-one. -on -one. Jump shot to the left. Notice that both players will go to a jab and attack position. Jab and attack, rise and shoot. Jab and attack, rise up for the jump shot. Triple threat position and shoot. Jab and attack, rise and shoot. It's important as you play one-on-one -on -one that you always learn to read the defender's foot position so you can learn what moves to use correctly. Jab and attack, shot fake, and go to the right. Jab and attack, and go to the left. You notice that both players are under control and read the defender's footwork. Jump shot to the left, jab and attack, crossover, jab and attack, rise and shoot, jab and attack, shot fake, and go to the left. One on one playoff series. An excellent way to improve your offensive moves and skills is to play one-on-one -on, -one on a daily basis using the pro rules, one dribble only. Try playing the playoff version of one-on-one. -on -one. In the playoff series, the first player to win four out of seven games is the playoff champion. Rest in between games by having both players shoot and record 10 free throws. This will give you the opportunity to play two different competitions daily. For additional information on proper foul shooting techniques and correct methods of concentration, refer to video number five, Foul Shooting Fundamentals Workout. Playing two on two for game situations. The red team will be left-handed players, the white team, right-handed players. These are common mistakes made when using triple threat moves. Number one, holding the ball above your head takes away two of your options. Notice that Andre jab and attacked, but overextended with his feet. He now does not have the ability to rise up and shoot. So now he has to force a difficult shot. It's important that you always play under control and take time to read what the defense is giving you. A second mistake is to not put the ball on the outside of your leg. A third common mistake is to not get down in a sprinter's position and break the eye level of the defender. You'll notice it's more difficult for the defender to move baseline and he should be attacked there. 
Now we'll show you correct reads of defenders using triple threat moves. Notice Thomas will go down to a jab and attack position. The defender retreats. He crosses over to the right for a jump shot. Triple threat position. The defender retreats. He crosses over for the jump shot. Defense plays tight. Andre gets under control into a jab and attack position and drives to the basket for the easy score. It's important that you always take time to get yourself under control and on balance when you are ready to attack. Jab and attack position, notice the balls to the outside of the leg and the eye level of the defender was broken. Receive the ball. You notice as the ball comes back to Steve, he'll catch it in triple threat, have room and rise up and shoot. Jab and attack position. You're going to attack the defender's right side because he'll have to turn his body to move to stay with you. A playing skill or move will never become second nature or natural to you until you've practiced it 10,000 times correctly. We've just finished showing you the complete workout for the offensive scoring program. We call this very simply the ABCs of basketball. A stands for attitude. Your attitude and your confidence will improve as you continue to practice more and more on a daily basis. B is for balance. If you do these drills correctly, you learn the footwork, the choreography, and you practice everything the way that you should, you'll begin to be a balanced, under control basketball player. And C, finally, is choreography. Choreography. If you do the footwork correctly, if you do not overextend, if you stay on balance, if you get in a jab and attack or sprinter's position, you'll become an extremely effective offensive player. The defense really got burned on that play. Oh my, he was inches away from having that shot blocked. Whoa, the defender got completely faked out on that move.